Thankfully, whoever tried to carry out this egregious act of arson failed, at least failed in terms of burning down the church. And even if you don't respect a certain religion, you should respect the law of the land, which is to say, hands off when it comes to vandalism, graffiti attacks, and arson. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Grand Anse, New Brunswick. And folks, I'm standing in front of the most significant piece of architecture here in Grand Anse, namely the St. Simon and St. Jude Catholic Church. And luckily, or maybe it was divine intervention, this church is indeed still standing behind me because you see, in the wee hours of Tuesday, someone entered the church via the side door and, well, tried to incinerate it. Thankfully, whoever tried to carry out this egregious act of arson failed, at least failed in terms of burning down the church. Right now, there are contractors on site repairing the damage, and I should tell you, the parish here, it dates back to the 1840s. The church behind me was completed in 1948. We know from reaching out to the RCMP that this is indeed being treated as an act of arson. And the question is, why? What was the motive of the arsonist right now? That remains unknown. And folks, before I go any further, I got to tell you, as far as I can tell, we are the only media outlet down here. Unlike Rebel News, the rest of the media doesn't seem to care about churches being attacked by firebugs. But you know something? We need your help. Our airfare, that's for Lincoln, Jay and I, just to get down to New Brunswick from Toronto, that's $3,600 alone. We have a rental car expense, a hotel expense. Can you help us out? Can you help us recover some of our costs? so that we can continue to bring you the other side of the story, please go to rebelfieldreports.com. That's rebelfieldreports.com. And if you're able to, kindly chip in. But folks, let me tell you, I think there is something more insidious at play here, which is to say for the last few years here in Canada, more than 100 churches have been attacked. Sometimes it's vandalism, sometimes it is being burnt to the ground. And for the mainstream media, for the federal government, it's really a nothing burger, isn't it? I would argue that what we've seen the past few years has been the most overlooked, underreported story in our country. And it's even worse than that. Consider Gerald Butts, Prime Minister Trudeau's best friend. He tweeted back in 2021 that attacking churches was understandable. Understandable? Are you kidding me? And why would that be? Why would the attack on Christian churches be understandable? Could it be tied to the hoax that certain Catholic churches, residential schools, are home to mass graves of indigenous people, including children. Like I said, that is a falsehood, folks. There has been zero evidence presented to maintain that narrative, yet the usual suspects still cling to that falsehood. It's a way of condemning colonialism or imperialism or anti-Christian mindset, you name it, but it's all based on an outrageous lie. And so it is that in the eyes of the Gerald Butts of the world, attacking churches is perversely fashionable. That is despicable. And given our geopolitics of the day, uh, I wonder, is it also fashionable to attack Jewish schools and synagogues? That's what we see being firebombed in Canada and again, it seems that for various levels of government and the mainstream media, nothing to see here. But then again, I suppose being anti-Jewish, anti-Israel, that's understandable in Canada these days, unbelievable. And I must point out, folks, the double standard. If, God forbid, anyone went out to firebomb a mosque, 
I wonder what the reaction would be. Well, I have a pretty good hunch. I think that would make for front page news. I think Justin Trudeau would cut short his surfing safari in Tofino, British Columbia and fly to wherever the mosque was to stage a press conference. And by the way, that is not conjecture. Consider what happened in 2018 when a Toronto Muslim girl claimed that a man with scissors had shredded her hijab. Well, Justin Trudeau and so many other politicians joined a hastily arranged press conference staged by the Toronto District School Board. It was to condemn Islamophobia. My heart goes out to the uh, young girl who was uh, attacked uh, seemingly for her religion. Except for one small insignificant hitch. The entire story was made up. It was a lie. It came to be known as the hijab hoax. But for those on the left, well, you see, even though it didn't happen, it could have happened. So therefore, we should still condemn Islamophobia, even when Islamophobia doesn't happen. Well, maybe I'm missing the nuance here of who to condemn and who not to condemn. But to me, it's completely non-understandable. But then again, I guess this is what happens when you're dealing with certain people whose thought process is based on illogical thinking. Now, my take is all places of worship should be respected. And even if you don't respect a certain religion, you should respect the law of the land, which is to say, hands off when it comes to vandalism, graffiti attacks, and arson. And one final thought, folks, whoever tried to burn down this magnificent structure earlier this week, well, thank God he failed. As I stated earlier, we don't know what his motive was or is, but whatever it is, to me, not understandable at all. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, my cameraman Lincoln Jay and I, we traveled all the way from Toronto to tiny Grand Anse, New Brunswick. Why? Well, this magnificent church behind me, it was subjected to an arson attack earlier this week. Thank goodness the arsonist failed to burn this magnificent structure to the ground. And I got to tell you, I don't see any other media here. I guess the burning and desecration of churches, that's a nothing burger to them. But we love to tell you the other side of the story, yet we need your help. Please go to rebelfieldreports.com. That's rebelfieldreports.com. And if you're able to help us recover our costs of coming here, kindly make a donation.